That was quick. Not a minute. This is the most quiet you all have been during the countdown. <laughs> right. uh, that's because I was I was trying to figure out what I was about to do in my life. I haven't been out the house in five days. Five days? You ready? Yeah, I'm scared of the pollen. Oh, he got me. Too. Me too. We're live. We're live. Yes, they can hear us. Hi. Okay. <laughs> It's your girl, Stacey J, and it's the news break this week. Yeah, you might have heard me. I've been in a bubble in my house for the past five days because I'm scared of the pollen. It makes me sick. So we're here. And tonight, it's going to be a good one. Now, I have to admit, well, first, 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 let me introduce who we got. So y'all always hear me breaking the fourth wall, right? She's here. Partner. <laughs> Has showed her face. Carmen, producer, who I'm always talking to when I'm breaking the wall. She's here tonight. So, yay. And then we got Sheldon. Love me a little moment with Sheldon. But we got a special guest for y'all. And hold on. Let me read my script before I say her name. Yep. <laughs> I can go ahead and say it. Okay. So, I ain't going to hold y'all. I binge watched this the, the other day, which is good because I was in here for five days, right? So, I binge watched this show, Love and Marriage DC. And so we got Mrs. Arena Tyler. And her hubby was like, amper her up. I saw him like reposting yes. and all that stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello. Hey, so thank you for joining in South Atlanta News Break tonight. We have a lot of fun. It's just go with how you feel. We ain't talk about hot topics. That's what we're about to do. Oh, I'm always God. breaking the fourth wall, but she's here tonight, so I get to do it, you know, on purpose. <laughs> and she's going to be mad at me. Thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, Carmen, what, what's going on? No, the people, uh, you know. Why, why is she letting Palo Santo? <laughs> You got to get that same thing. What's wrong with you? And why? Yes. Who yes. is you, okay? Do you need me to send some like, <laughs> let me send your mug. CJ is always talking to me off camera. I don't know why. Because I'm I be having questions and answers and we live. It's not like I can say pause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't say pause, so now we here. Yes, we are here. What an NY Atlanta uh, coffee mug. Your Atlanta yes. coffee mug. Yes, but there's wine in there. <laughs> See, and that's her problem right there. She always coffee. Has, and that's her problem. She over there sipping. You know, she be, she be right here, giving us this good tea. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, we're going to go ahead and get this thing cracking. So tonight we are breaking down the latest topics, including Real Housewives of Potomac star Camp, Karen Huger. Huger was arrested and charged after crashing her Maserati. Okay, Grandma Karen. Drake sent $25,000 to a pregnant concert goer. Alleged YSL getaway driver tells the court he's too high during the trial. Then a Houston family beats up a rideshare driver that fatally hit a toddler with his car. Mimi Leakes and little sis Portia Williams Gubati have drawn lines in the sand. Okay, speaking of choosing sides, later we'll talk about tonight's guest host, Arena Tyler, about being caught in between friends, the Petties and the Silvers on this even season of Love and Marriage DC. I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> no, wait to talk. Oh, because I was like, it's the audacity for me, sis. It's a lot. It's a lot. I mean. I'm not, and I'm not even going to tell you what side I'm on yet. But of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely on y'all side. Y'all are, are keeping it player. Keeping it player, but you know, it's a real like Sheree Whitfield moment. Who gonna check me, boo? <laughs> like that's, that's truly what it's giving. But before we get to that, let's see what's on our um 
thing, Carmen. <laughs> on the agenda. On the agenda. Let's get into these topics. All right. So Real Housewives of Potomac star Karen Hooger DUI was reportedly arrested after the authorities said the Real Housewives of Potomac star crashed her 2017 Maserati. Now, I feel like that's slightly shady for you to put that crime in, but that's okay. On Tuesday night, while allegedly driving under the influence, Ooh. she was alone and the damage to her car left it inoperable. She told TMZ, I'm still in shock from last night's incident, but grateful to be alive today. With the passing of my beloved mother, grief comes and goes in waves. And with Mother's Day approaching, it has felt more like a tsunami. Sad situation, but we send our prayers to Karen. So, what's y'all thoughts on it? Like, what's going, what's going on? Karen in getting a DUI at this big age. So, I know Karen. Karen is from the area of Maryland, where I'm, where I live. Um, okay. I know her personally. She's a beautiful woman. Uh, I'm glad she's okay because I did see the picture circulating of her yeah. hitting. She hit the tree. The tree mm. was damaged. <laughs> um, the fact that she was drinking under the influence. I heard that she was out with a friend. They were talking about, I guess, their moms or somehow her mom came up um, where she started to feel a certain type of way because Mother's Day is coming up soon. Um, but mm. my take is if you know you're going to drink a lot and you're out, at least think about getting a driver because I know she can afford it. She's Potomac housewife. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> you know? Or if, you feel, if you're sitting there and you're drinking, you're drinking nonstop and you know that you're not going to be able to drive, leave your car there and take a right. Uber. It's yeah. always going to be safe. It's options. It's definitely options. So, um, because we actually got into this little discussion earlier today, and I was saying, I mean, I have not lost a parent. However, okay, I just got one question. When did her mother pass? It was, it, I, I don't know if it's said 2017 or earlier than that. I can't remember, but it's, yeah. been a, it's been a while. Okay, and not that grief has a time. It does it does not have a time. Let me start mm -hmm. off by saying that. Mm -hmm. However, we ain't even got the Easter six. <laughs> what is you talking about? Mother Day. <laughs> sure, no Mother's Day commercial. She said it. She said it. It depends on it. Seriously, grief does not have a time. Mm -hmm. If they were really having a deep discussion about their parents and she started crying and getting emotional. It can take a toll you. I lost my parents almost 30 years ago now. And so at any given moment, I can have a wave of grief. The right. only thing I will say about that is that Karen is adult enough and should be responsible enough to know when she doesn't need to get behind the wheel of a car. Because had someone lost a life in that situation, mm. you cannot say, well, I was upset about my mom when you know you were also drinking. Right. And I also heard too something about her failing to do a breathalyzer and that's why she got arrested. Did you what? I, from personal mm. experience, anytime you do reject doing a breathalyzer, they're always going to arrest you because that's the thing to tell right then and there whether you actually are in top, above the legal limit or not. So mm. with that said, I also read that she said that Somebody hit her and then made her jump the median and then they drove off. No, I didn't. Uh -uh. I, I read. Well, I read that. So, so many stories going around. I mean, like, today <laughs> this morning when I opened my eyes, social media it was all Karen. Right. Mm. I, guess, yeah. I guess my biggest thing with her is, like I said, grief does not have a time. Like so, but at the same time, let's let's not throw Mother's Day into this. I don't really think that has an area. In this conversation, what happened? What happened? You went out with your friends. You guys were talking about your mothers. Yeah, they made you feel upset. That's totally understandable. But also in that moment, you have to be like, "Hey, okay, mm -hmm. I had too much to drink." Right. Responsible. Let, yeah. let me let me call um uh the black Bill Gates so he can come pick me up. Well, not mm -hmm. only that, the friend that you was with, 
Why didn't that friend recognize that you had way too much? Let me take you home. I've taken my friends home numerous it's times. Probably. Exactly. Because that's the real question. Right. You know, you can say that you were in an emotional state, but you were drunk. If you were drunk, that's a whole nother situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I feel like I need a drink. And the friend sat there and watched you. So is that drink, drink? Well, that, right. well, that, like, yeah, and like I said, at this big age, I will hope that you hanging around people that will say, "Hey, maybe that's not the right move. Maybe they did. We don't know." However, I I hate that she's in this situation, especially yes. when you have a name. It's not a it's not a good look because at that at this point, it seems like. Yes, you need to be held accountable regardless of who you are, but celebrities are being like they're making statements with the with celebrities now. You know what I'm saying? They're they're trying to be like, oh, okay, no. Nah. <laughs> no, sis, you was playing and she don't look good in orange. <laughs> well, you know, I, I overheard a discussion last night while I was at an event. I cannot say that they said anything to me directly, but my ears were open and it sounded like this person was on the phone with Karen and she was expressing that she wasn't actually arrested, just taken down to the station. But either way, okay, she was drinking. She shouldn't have been behind the wheel. End the what? story. I'm sorry what? about her mom, but you shouldn't be behind the wheel. Ow. Let let me find out they don't be uh booking people for uh, real DUIs in Potomac. They it. probably didn't put the handcuffs on her. Mm -hmm. they, they did. Yeah, they they took her they down. You know me when I wasn't even drunk, so I'm moving to Potomac. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Don't mind me. Don't mind me. So we we're gonna get into the next topic. Um, mm -hmm. let's see, Drake, Drake. Drake recently gifted a pregnant fan 25000 after she asked him to be her rich baby daddy, holding up a sign that says, I'm five months pregnant. Can you be my rich baby daddy? Drake said, I don't want to offend your real baby daddy, but I want to get you out this pig somewhere more safe like VIP. So he later added, I'd love to give you 25000 so you can be my rich baby mama. Have you ever fanned out and held up a sign or tried to contact a celebrity you really like? Hell, no. Never. No. <laughs> no. 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 No, never. When I was growing up, I was a huge Oprah fan. Like, I used to come home from school and watch Oprah every day at 4 o'clock. Okay. And my parents died in high school. And back in the day, Oprah wasn't just talking to celebrities. She was talking to everyday regular people. So I have to admit, I used to write Oprah all the time. Because oh, I, wanted to go on her show. I wanted to go on her show so bad. But when Twitter came out, I don't uh, remember what year it was, but when Twitter came out, I was watching an old episode of Oprah because I don't even think the Oprah show was actually on anymore, but it was like a rerun episode. And I noticed that her mic flag was upside down. So I went on Twitter and I said, I am watching an old episode of Oprah. And girl, that flag is upside down. And Oprah tweeted me back. She's my fairy godmother. She's been yes. listening to this whole time. <laughs> that is hilarious. I say that's what I put it on my Facebook. It was there for a long time. I couldn't believe it. Let it to me so I can print it out and get a frame for you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, yeah. Hold on. But before we get off your auntie, oh. Now. Uh oh. This, this is a hope. Okay. So, you know, it, it's always some drama with auntie, oh, but it's silent drama. So did y'all recently see where Tyler Perry was sitting there talking to Kerry Washington? Yeah. And, like, and Kerry, yeah. I was trying to figure oh, out, do we do we miss something? Okay. Yeah, because it's did a, we miss something? A, yes, because it's alleged that her and Taraji P. Henson are very good friends. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I'm gonna stay out of this conversation because I am <laughs> on the Oprah Winfrey Network. 
Yeah, yeah, you yeah, are. Let me I'm get it. Right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this like this. La, 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 la. Okay. Okay. We definitely, I love you. I love you. We I definitely pitched our show to own. And I think that we got beat out by Ladies Who List. And guess what? Ladies Who List is canceled. Mm -hmm. Man, Ladies Who List ain't listening. Hey, listen. <laughs> picked up in style Atlanta uncut. <laughs> oh, it's not too late. It's not too late, girl. <laughs> I need to try to step to a real thing. It's not too late. I'll talk to you guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But no, Please. I was just like, dang, who is this? Something is really going on the way that you yeah. Like, yes. Auntie O tried a couple times. She, Auntie O was trying to figure out why Tyler Perry was in the middle of the picture and Tyler Perry just sitting there looking like Madea. Oh man. <laughs> like just looking like Madea. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just had to see if y'all talked Mm-hmm. Okay. So has anybody Drake, else fanned out? No, I've never I've never fanned out, out. But Drake is very generous because I've seen several yeah. times when he's given out purses at his concert. Um he recently just gave out like six figures to Akbar. You know who Akbar oh, is? Oh, nice. Right? Yeah, the, yeah, the rapper, right? I think she was doing like a, a foundation or some type of fund um, where she needed money. Oh. And he did. He, fought, he followed through and gave her like six figures. <laughs> recently. Oh, that's awesome. I need some yeah. affiliates. Of so he's always given. I mean, I just let me go get my tickets the next time he comes. I know that's right. <laughs> <awesome. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what? We gonna Bruh. put a group chat together, and we all gonna be in there like Dre. <laughs> yeah. right. Dre. Okay. And it, bags like it's nothing. Like, well, and everybody standing in different sections with the same sign. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, at his birthday party, I think it was recently his birthday party. He had a. Uh, what oh, a vending it? machine, like a um, the claw machine. machine. Yeah, he had it filled with Chanel. Mm -hmm. Same girl was walking out of there with Chanel bag. I was like, telling you, he's that's hot. Something. Right, yeah. I need my invitation to the party. That's this classic. Oh this man, he got that that money. Yeah, yep. long money. Drake, you want everything. You're all I ever wanted. We can do it real big, bigger <laughs> than you ever done it. Okay. <laughs> Just quit this. Department, okay, okay. <laughs> You got it going on. All right. So let's just see. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Wait, go back, Carmen. I got one fanned out moment. Oh. I got one fanned out moment. Okay. Fanned out moment came when we recently did our interview with Toya, Bush Harris, and Andy Cohen looked at our story. Yes, you right. did. Yes, you did. I'm here, bro. I was crying. Yes. I love Andy Cohen. Me and too. I don't need to be sitting on that couch or, or me in the chair or watch what happens live or behind the bar. One or the mm -hmm. other. So Andy looked at our stuff a couple times. Yep. I fanned out. I ain't gonna hold you. I fanned out. My friends was like, so did you write a back? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I forgot about my moment. And I'm gonna say it real quick. Y'all know Maxwell. I'm a huge Maxwell fan. Love That's it. Hey, your concert here in DC. My husband knows I love him. So as we were going up the escalator, I had this long gown. It was like a uh, uh, evening type wear. So we had to wear like the gowns and the black tie situation. Uh -huh. And my dress was hanging and I was struggling going up the steps. Of course, my husband's beside me, not paying me no attention. Right. Maxwell came behind me as I was going up the steps and said, can I help you? Let me help you up the steps. That was dope. Oh, that, that was good. So that was good. That was good. Oh, nobody had their phones. I was like, this is a moment <laughs> and I was supposed to capture and no one had their phones. And I was just such in a shock. Like, I was like, he said, I'll help you. I'm going to help you up the steps. I was like, oh. yeah. That was a good one. Wow. See, I was not the only Maybe one. I would have thought awesome. you're fortunate to have you, boy. I'm so glad you're in my world. <laughs> Just the shores the sky's blue. I'm glad the day that I found you. But I mean, like, every time he comes to DC, I'm in the crowd like this. Like, <laughs> you remember me? You remember me? You have to get you me. me. You remember me. You remember me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, I love y'all. Sheldon, you don't have no fan moment. And Sheldon, Sheldon, don't let Sheldon fool you. He used to be right. an R&B singer back in the day. 
Right. On tour right. with folks. Right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah, I've, I've had some fan out moments, but I just, I don't know. I, I can't even think of one, but I'm sure I did. Shell, just say the song. I want to hear your oh, song. Oh, no, don't you do that. Because ah! uh -uh, I ain't going to do the same gospel, so let's go to the next <laughs> Well, yeah. all right. <laughs> We're gonna take this thing all down <laughs> to the deacon's list. Okay, what's next on the deacon's list? All right. So we have here during the testimony in the YSL Rico Young Thug trial, state witness Adrian Bean took the stand, repeatedly stating he didn't remember anything. He was questioned as he as seen in the video footage streamed online. Bean looked around the courtroom with his eyes and said, I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go to sleep on y'all, man. Bean's testimony is repeatedly, reportedly the only evidence that ties Thug to the crime and told Fulton <laughs> County Supreme Court judge that he receives threats. He received threats, been harassed, and lost his job due to testifying in the trial. This trial has been seen, has been, wait, what? This trial has seen its fair share of wild moments. What are your thoughts about what's going on with the trial? There are so many shenanigans going on with this trial. I cannot keep up. Just the other day, the attorneys were arguing with the judge. I was like, where did that was hilarious. I see that part. They were talking oh. to the judge like he was somebody on the street. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes. I saw that. That was incredible. I need to see that. I didn't see that clip. I missed how that. How do you come to court high, and how how do they expect him to make a sound decision with anything, or just even do a testimony mm -hmm. when your brain is fogged? You high. He was falling asleep. Like how can he be a good witness? That when he said that, I would have been like, "Get your." Uh, right, right, right. Let's go. Right. That's it's their only bus. witness. That's their only witness right now. Oh, mm -hmm. only witness because that's what it says, right? Like he's their main witness. Yes, yes. He's, he's, the, he's the witness that would tie Thugger to this Rico. My husband um, mm -hmm. retired yeah. from police department. He did twenty five years. He retired a year ago, and then we were talking about this case. And he said, "Normally, people do stuff like that. He may not have been high, but when they want to throw something out, they'll do anything to disrupt right. it. They right. it's not mm -hmm. high under the influence or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that may have been his goal. He he may not have been high because I just cannot see this happening. Yeah, me either. Wow. Sorry. Hold on one second. That's my bad." <laughs> It's, I got like two phones and then everything is on my computer. Like, sorry. Yeah. But no, that's crazy though. But I mean, I guess that man not trying to lose his life, maybe. Maybe he really was threatened. And like, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm high. Get me out of here. Right. Every question answered with, I don't remember. I mean, it was really a waste of time anyway. It was pure <laughs> entertainment. When he said he oh, needed some God. water because he was high, I said, uh, he oh my God! Like, <laughs> like you can't make this up. Like this is crazy. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh! Hold on one second. I'm sorry. So so glad my life ain't in the balance when it comes to that, brother. I need you to speak up. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Bro, come on now. I'm just trying to figure out though. Like, if you were supposed to testify, saying connecting the dots, like, okay, yes, Thug was this, Thug was that. This is how. You guys are making your case. And now this man sitting here talking about, uh, I'm so high, y'all. Uh, I'm not just he was faking he, 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 he had a motive. He, he's faking it. Yeah. I mean, because if you listen. Right in there, I don't hold you. <laughs> but I mean, he be, he's been receiving threats. He's lost his job. Yeah. Like, I, job? I, 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 I can see that. What job? Yeah, and the chicken? I mean, but, but, no, no, no. But this is what, what he says. But this is what he says, though. Like, he's lost, and, and so much is coming at him like this. You know what I'm saying? To me, that seems like a very viable motive to yeah. just, well, I just want to, I just want to disassociate from this. Right. And get back to life. Exactly. Yeah. He's probably also been threatened to not testify in favor of, mm -hmm. you know, or against Young Thug. 
if all of these allegations are true. true so right. he's going to do anything he can to not actually answer the question. Yeah. It's Friday. <laughs> you ain't got no job. You mm. don't get high. You ain't got 10 to do. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, this is Atlanta, and it's been decriminalized, so that so that was good. <laughs> right. <laughs> My other thing. So he is literally just a witness. So he he came from yeah. Home. He came from home. He ain't come from jail. He came from home. Right. Mm-hmm. He's a witness, but. And he talked to somebody and they told him what to do. And he yep. said, period. Like That's he what it sounds like. Yep. He do nothing so he can get off the stand and don't have to yep. deal with nothing mess. Yep. This That's what it sounds like to me. He probably would have thought for real for it. I ain't gonna hug you. <laughs> he yeah. probably had to get high just to go. Exactly. <laughs> it's glad keep I his mind right. He probably would have for real for real. <laughs> All right. Well, thug, I don't know what's gonna happen. Hopefully, this is the thing that you need in order to make your case go away. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> However, you know, it's ooh, free slime. I don't know. Okay, so you know what? We just gonna go on to the show. Not to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not to him. Right. An Uber driver dropping off a family in Texas has been suspended pending an investigation after a deadly accident. In a video shared online, a woman and her six-year-old got out the Uber from the back and left from the back left and walked around toward the apartment. A second woman and the one-year-old exited the car from the back right. The second woman was walking in front of the younger child to the front of the car. Authorities said the child then crossed in front of the vehicle and was hit when the driver slowly started to move forward, forward, claiming he didn't see her. The one-year-old was rushed to the hospital in critical t- condition, but did not survive. In the video, you see the women and other witnesses attack the driver who was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. This is a tragic story. Do you think the driver deserves to be attacked or suspended? I so, think at a moment when you hit somebody's child, I mean, a little child was killed. Um, Although I've always been taught, and I still do this day, I don't walk in front of cars. When I'm getting dropped off, I always go behind. Yeah, I never Mm. go in front because sometimes they're not paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Although he should have been looking forward to see these people. But I think because of what happened in the heat of the moment, the family's mad, the neighbors are mad, everybody's mad, and he's right there, the police is not around, and their first reaction is to, like, eat his pants. I definitely think they reacted out of shock, yeah. but the adults in that car were definitely negligent. When you watch the video, the adults and the bigger kids were crossing the street and this baby is in front of this car not holding anybody's hand, just by himself. Well, by, was it a girl or a boy? By her. I think it was a girl. And the was... height of the child versus the car, I really don't think that the driver seen the baby. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's a very tragic situation, but whoever those adults were in the car and even the bigger kid, they should have picked up the baby to get out. I think that the ride share company is probably reacting to trying to figure out how to mediate that situation. But when you look at that video, there's no way the driver saw the baby. Yeah, I mean, I think he was probably put on suspension just due to investigation, which is completely understandable. They have to get down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. But it looked like he was in an SUV, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like you're high. You You cannot see that baby. The adult walking. He waited for the, he saw the adult. He waited for the adult. But when the baby was walking, even though her hair was high in a bun, it was that high enough. She's just too little. And he didn't see that. Now, with the adults attacking him, I do feel like they wasted time trying to help the baby beating up the driver. Like, even with the driver was probably in shock. Right. And didn't know if they should move forward or back up because who who knows what to do if a baby is stuck under the car? But oh. then, but then no, I the driver, I'm like, I'm gonna figure out how to get the baby from under the car, not beat him oh. up. 
Right. Oh, what a baby was stuck. Or at least one person beat his ass while somebody else getting the baby out. Like, let's. Well, my thing is get to the child. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because even there have been situations where women have done fight for flight and lift cars up off of children. So right. my thing is get to the child, you know right. what I'm saying? And 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 my thing is this is just a, a wild day, you yeah. know what I'm saying? For for you to just react like that instead of run to the aid of your child. I just think that that's a lot. And interesting enough, as it just I would put myself in 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 the situation um, of the driver. Had that been me, I would have been devastated right. if I hit somebody's <laughs> child. I was, I was actually hit by a car growing mm. up mm. and I I walked right in front of the car and where thank God I stepped as I was even with the car so it knocked me back and down and I didn't even fly back I just slid and I went under the car how mm. I got half of my body under that car Mm. And she stopped right before <laughs> the back wheel rolled over me. Ooh. And I was in the fifth, no, I was five years old. I think I was in either, I was in first grade. And that was devastating, one, to go through that. And then right. two, my mom would say that was the longest drive she could have knowing that my baby, the, mm -hmm. they don't just pull my baby from under a car because they didn't give her any details. Your yeah. son has been in a car accident mm -hmm. and she's in the neighboring city at work trying mm -hmm. to get home to me. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, trying to get to school to me because it was actually in the morning on the way to school. Mm -hmm. That is just devastating. That is just devastating. I cannot imagine what that man went through harming a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like, I don't, like I said, I don't even think in that very moment, he didn't even have a chance to react or respond because yeah. Yeah, beating his ass yeah but like yeah. you said that the, they were negligent to the adults they should have had their baby's hand mm. and it should have been going in front of the car like that they should have been walking around the car at least because yeah the baby know. is walking just by himself. Himself. Yeah, you know yeah you know what is it, interesting and i want to bring this up when it, the whole neg negligent part 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 of what's going on i was working in retail and we we you know i would i'll always be out in the aisles moving around I, you know uh department manager so i'm always moving around it is unbelievable how people walk away from their children at these ages it is unbelievable mm. y'all when i tell you atlanta is one of the biggest child trafficking places in yeah. the united states right it is one of the biggest watch this i used to do a a a marshal a u.s Marshall's hair and she told me one day she said that there was a uh there was a a a, a scenario where there they had got tipped because she's a marshal she can usurp authority she can get to different places when other people can't because she has that federal authority mm. she says she goes into this house she says they are searching the house for like 45 minutes and she is like looking around she got her people looking around and everything she says they get ready to leave she walks out of the house get to the door and she says something inside was like mm, i don't know about this let me go back inside she goes back inside her intuition that's why i love black women because i feel like y'all got x-ray vision i swear to god and um she said she told her people she says let's go back into the closet she goes into the closet y'all and there was a safe inside of the closet she told her people to move the safe y'all the girl got on her knees and looked behind the safe and saw oh three sets of eyes looking back at her oh my God. this man had a 14 15 and 17 year old girls stuffed in his wall mm. one of the little girls this right here in atlanta one of the little girls tipped a cell phone and that's how they found him wow watch this the same girl it's this house over in on, on the east side 
had mm-hmm. a red door, it had a red garage door on it, y'all. Did she say that these very expensive cars would pull into the garage, they would stay for a couple of hours, and then they would leave. They got tipped off because the neighbors started saying that it was some crazy mm-hmm. activity in there. Mm-hmm. Y'all, they went in the house and tell me why there were there there was no furniture in the house except in the rooms and and like a dog kennel there were cages on top of each other with black girls inside of each one of them y'all he had them babies in the like dogs at a kennel and these rich ass perverts was coming there screwing these little girls and the only time they had to eat in the cages and the only time they could shower was before sex. Mm, mm, mm. This is in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. I have worked on so many sex trafficking campaigns. It is unbelievable. It is sickening. If you living in Atlanta, Georgia, you are a fool if you do not have your child it almost in your right. pocket. That negligence right. is real, y'all. Or yeah. sending them off to the restaurant by themselves. I've seen that too. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, like we, we look at the different times. The things that we were able to do as children and our parents would be like, go ahead and come right back. You cannot do that stuff anymore. You can't do that now. Yeah. Yeah. And, to be, and to be honest, you really couldn't do it back in the day. <laughs> but um, yeah. Because there's some creepy stuff used to happen back in the day too. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? Now it's widespread and we see it more. And you know what I'm saying? We have a, more exposure to it. But the, the truth is, that's your child. You, you need to be protecting your child, period. Yeah. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to mm-hmm. go ahead and uh, switch this thing around because every time Sheldon starts talking, it gets so deep. I'm so deep, y'all. I am. <laughs> I am. Oh, my God. Oh. That's me. Talk about some drama. Talk about some drama. So, Nene Lee says, hopped on Instagram to share a disappointing post when Lil says Portia Williams, Gubati, refused to show up for an appearance on the Upshaws, claiming they have unresolved issues from the past. Later, Nene was seen with her boyfriend and Portia's estranged husband, <laughs> Simon Gubati, and another woman appearing on a double date. Later, we also saw a text from the two. And Portia declared Nene chose a side despite Portia showing loyalty to the former housewife. Was this photo Nene being was this photo Nene being petty or choosing to stand with Simon over Portia? Mm. Shade. It was real shade. I'm gonna post um the new girl. It was real shade. It was. Big sister, little sis, but you posted the new girl. She's mad because she didn't, because she was trying to ice her out of that um, that show that she was trying to do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so as soon as that happened, right now, here you go posting a picture of Simon and some new girl. Like right well, behind you. Well, you know, I mean, even though Michelle Michelle Obama said when they go low, we should go high. Nene like to go to bed. <laughs> They had issues in the past. If you watch the show, you know that Nene and Portia have gotten into it in the past. Mm-hmm. They probably would when they just started becoming sit, little sis and big sis once she got with Simon, right? They started hanging out with Simon and, and Yanni. Yeah, they right. started yeah, yeah because, because they're, they're friends. friends. But they it's got- that you, it's things that you just don't never, you're not going to forget. Okay, that's just like with me and my cast members. <laughs> you right. know, it, things happen in the past, but then a co- you come around and you say, okay, we could be cordial. We try to build a friendship, but you just don't forget things that you've done in the past. And Portia remembers all the shady hint that Nene has done to her in the past. Right. She comes and posts this picture. She knows what time it is. Portia not stupid. Mm-hmm. Well, I can say uh, who, who I, I got a whole nother perspective when y'all done. Who, who said it best? <laughs> um, I forget. Somebody just said this. She said, when it comes down to it, uh, oh, I think it was Candace from Real Housewives of Potomac. She was on the she's on the thing with Angela Yee or whatever. She mm-hmm. said yeah, she she was all for the same part. And but she was trying to wait around. They never called her or whatever the case may be. And Candace said. And I have to agree with this. She was like, 
we friends, but that just because we friends don't mean it's good for us to work together. Because the last time we worked together, this is what happened. Mm. And I'm not gonna... only that, but Portia is on the cast again for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And mm. that's what that is. She didn't want to muddy the waters because <laughs> she is on there and Nene done sued them people. Exactly. So what she didn't want to do was get caught working with Nene because that looked like she's friends with the ops. Mm -hmm. Now here's the deal. And but that that's could ruin the look though. That's been the look when she was hanging out with Simon and him. But watch this. I, 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 but I don't know how many, I don't know how many real pictures that we've we've seen because here's the thing all of the all of the re all of she couldn't hide behind the relationship with simon anymore because mm -hmm. because while, while they were together oh these my husband friend she could throw that off on that but now this husband ain't in place mm -hmm. so now you got to leave everything that's connected to him because now if you do something with nini it's on your own accord Right. Maybe. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She probably should have called Nene sidebar and yes. said, girl, I cannot come. Right. Instead right. of throwing Nene under the bus with the producers from Upshaw. That was the foul part. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, at the end of the day, it's not like y'all sitting here going to kiki key it up in uh Right. Y'all going to work. Y'all going to work. Y'all going to get a check. So, and obviously the Upshaws is not on Bravo. You know what I'm saying? And they're not going to mm -hmm. be Bravo liberties. So with that being said, I don't think it was a muddy the water type situation, me personally. Since if you just didn't really want to work with her, or if maybe the check wasn't big enough, or whatever the case it may be, then, then say that. If that is your real true friend, because honestly, y'all got a friendship. Like, everybody see y'all. Because they didn't make that decision on her own. She has a team. Yeah, yeah, she she a publicist. She has a manager. And they yep. probably told her what was right and what she should do. She she didn't make that decision yep. on her own. I don't Ooh, think she did I either. Mercy. I don't know. Like, I'm, the I'm way she turned it down should have just been done differently for the sake of what their relationship is supposed to be, big sis, little sis. Exactly. Look, and one thing you can't do in reality TV, don't send no damn text messages. Because <laughs> they didn't incriminate. <laughs> right. Here you go. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Ooh, well, I mean, I would love, I mean, I know we won't ever see Nene back on Real Housewives of Atlanta, however, but at the end of the day, like, she still has relationships. I mean, whatever, if I'm on Real Housewives of Atlanta and my friend had to sue, that's what she felt she had to do with her own situation in terms of the company and her. Like, that's how she felt. That ain't got nothing to do with me nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with my check. It doesn't affect my check. So with that being said, she's still going to perform for Bravo. It do y'all think that um, Phaedra coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta? No. You don't think I so? do think that they should I bring her so back to Housewives, take her off of Married to Medicine. This <laughs> don't need to be one man. <laughs> But if they're gonna keep favor or real or or in uh, married to medicine, then they should just send quad to the housewives. Now I agree with quad going to housewives, but Phaedra going back to housewives, no, I don't agree with that. If the money I feel is like, I feel like so she's get praying, more, it's on her lane. <laughs> like the women, where where uh Phaedra is that in life and what she's trying to accomplish, especially in terms of love. I think she needs to be on Married to Medicine. No. Happened on House. She mm -hmm. she wasn't a good mm -hmm. fit. I yeah. that's she was she was out here with nobody. Like I mean, we can technically say we can technically say she, we can say, she, say she in the medical field, oh, because she deal with dead bodies. I don't she know. Was doing nothing. Because the blogs have the been eating Phaedra up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I ain't saying what you're talking. She was nothing. She was, she was just nothing. When I say the blogs have been saying everything you're saying, they've been eating her alive. Yeah. They was like, oh my God. It was like this girl was dead weight the entire season. Yeah. yeah. I think I think a thing of coming in on a cast has been together for 10 years, number one. And like they'll have newbies come in and out, but 
it's not movies that make significant like like you know but uh, the movies are usually in some way related to medicine i i, I understand right. the whole funeral director thing but i think that's a reach and an excuse well, to I have her on there. I just made. However, but at the end of the day, okay, she had they allowed her to come on there with a boyfriend that was a doctor. They should have filmed she the breakup there or something. Make it make sense. Boyfriend, did we? That man was African. He ain't about to have that happen. I don't know. I don't watch reality shows. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> set her up with a doctor. <laughs> so, okay. from the village? Uh, are you mad? Go for a village. You put yourself what, what tripped me out is when she went on that couple's trip. And she sat there while those couples talked about personal issues in their marriage. That's yeah. gonna never happen. I she sat there by herself and just listening to these issues and stuff that these these couples are having, and it's like she just sitting there. But that's the whole thing in terms of if you kick quad out, you should sure kick Phaedra out too on some of the things because Phaedra was the one that brought quad back around. Mm. But Quad has more reason to be there because she was a part she of the cast and she is the ex-wife of one of the doctors. But Phaedra being there, I don't know if she should have been an official cast member. Maybe she should have been Quad's friend and Quad the show. One and brought her in and we just seen them together. But nah, nah. I'd much I'm, rather see her go back to Housewives. I mean, I a doctor. What are we what are we doing here? I, I don't know, but what one thing I don't want to see if Kenya wasn't going to be on Housewives, then yes, I could see Phaedra there. However, because Kenya's going to be there, there is a level of like I know it makes good TV too, but their level of toxicity in terms of reads is it, it's just pure disgusting. After the read that Phaedra gave Kenya, telling her like. In order for you to have a baby, a man had to go get uh spew in a cup and he got Ooh. ten dollars in a large pizza just so you could have a baby. I was like, see, I love Phaedra, but she needs to be on Housewives. Maybe know. that's the story. Maybe, maybe Phaedra and Kenya make up or have a whole new discussion since she and she and Apollo are divorced. Because yeah. wasn't she accusing Kenya of flirting yeah. with Apollo? With Apollo. Yeah, she was, but it's just um, mm, I don't want her on Housewives. Okay, then if not on Housewives, if not on Married to Max, we just need to find another show. How about Love and Marriage DC? No, because we already got Winter, who doesn't have a man on Love and Marriage DC, which is a couple show. Well, the <laughs> the so ice that came more, up the screen. More women playing around <laughs> on Love and Marriage DC. Well, y'all got the PR chick doing it, so I mean. But she they got Richard as a main cast with no man. I know, but what's the girl named Carmen? Carmen seems like she Yes, this month. She always watching in Stella Atlanta. Huh? I said Winter is always liking and watching in Stella Atlanta. Oh, well, Winter, you need to come on here. Uh, uh, clean up. <laughs> The storyline of you just not having sex and you with this man, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I, I'm still the only six. So you know what? So here we go. Because speaking about petty, I'm so glad we was talking about petty things, petty. right? Petty. Speaking of being petty, when we come back, we're gonna be talking more with Arena Tyler about this drama between the Silvers. Am I saying that right? Silvers, the Silvers. yeah, the Silvers, Silvers and the Petties. Right now, let's take a break and pay some bills with our sponsor, Plus Beauty. When we come back, it's going to be more hot. Crack it on down. All right. 
All right. So I binge watched this show the other day because um, I have like six or seven shows that I'm watching. So when Carmen was like, all right, I was like, no down. Xfinity, run me back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> so welcome back. Back to Insta News Break. I'm Snake TJ, and I'm here with Metro Man of Atlanta House host Sheldon G. Horton, Juicy Pop. Oh, she not on here. How Destiny get fired on her day off again? I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Destiny, will we give you a chance? That's what you do, sis. You, you must not have the updated note. Destiny is not on there. Oh, well, that's not my fault. <laughs> so we are with Sheldon, Carmen, fourth wall Carmen, that's what we're going to call you now, and Love and Marriage DC, OG, Arena Tyler. So this season on Love and Marriage DC, the OGs have come a long way. The gutter Barbies return to a seafood restaurant with snowflake, but friendships have been tested. Loyalty, accountability, and awkward vacations. Lorena, please tell us how did you get caught up between Ashley and Joyce B? Oh my gosh, these ladies are driving me crazy, okay? So of course, Ashley and I, we've been friends. We're building a friendship. Let me correct it. <laughs> we've been I building know. a friendship since filming season one. Season two, here comes Joy. Joy and I immediately connect. Um, she has a wonderful personality. She's bubbly, very outgoing. Um, my husband is very close to her husband, Clifton. So we would go out and do like couple dates. And so immediately, you know, we kind of like just became, you know, good friends and still is today. I think what happened is Ashley got a little jealous of my relationship with Joy. Although Joy was friends with Ashley as well. Or building a friendship with her because we would hang out, you know, outside of filming. Mm -hmm. We would go see um, Joy perform. Ashley would be with me. We would go to Ashley's house and hang out. But I think when Aunt Joy and I started to get closer, um, and she started seeing us hanging out, you know, as couples, I think that's where she got a little jealous of, you know, the friendship. So at the point where you know I kind of got stuck in the middle, it was okay. You know, Joy, you're hanging with the petties now. You know, you're over there hanging with Clifton and Joy. And and it, in one of the scenes, it was saying that she was like, you know, you don't spend enough time with me when we did the seafood uh, dinner with Winter. Mm -hmm. She said, you could, you're a little too busy for me now. You know, I don't get to hear from you. You know, I don't see you anymore. You know, you're with the petties all the time. And she had an issue with that. Right. And the reason is because my husband, number one, is a lot. <laughs> I've been married to my husband for almost 30 years. My husband is Yes, now God. Married. Yeah, so he, he's, yes, been, God. Look, he's retired now. So he's home. I'm an entrepreneur. I work from home as well. And we're inseparable. You know, we're always out. If you see my Instagram, me and my husband are always together. I really mm -hmm. don't have time to sit up under another female. So Ashley has friends who want to, you know, sit up under her, you know, have her back and call. Anytime she calls, she wants you to be right there with her. And I've never been that girl. I'm with my husband most of the time. My husband and I like hanging out with couples. Quicksilver is never home. He's always working. He has like seven, eight jobs. <laughs> so trying to get with them to do couples nights is never going to happen because Quick is a DJ. He's a radio personality. He's always gone. And there's nothing wrong with that. He likes to be busy. That's his source of income. And he does what he does. But we just were connected to the to the petties more because of us being gravitated to the couple, just being, you know, around them. And it's just like the jealousy, you know, she just got jealous of it. So then I got caught in the middle and I wanted us all to come together to be friends again and stop all the bickering and the fussing and all the fighting and everything. But right. of course you see it, that never, <laughs> it never resolves itself though. All right, so let's go back to the uh, the the Wizards game. At the oh. <laughs> okay, so Carmen and Sheldon, have y'all been watching? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't watch reality shows. I'm so sorry. Okay, so <laughs> I watch the Wizards. Game. That was a lot. Right. So, so this, 
just to paint the picture, you know. Okay, thank you. Roy and Ashley been having a problem. Mm-hmm. But why did they? But why do they have a problem? They why have. Do they have that problem. What happened? Who said what? Okay, so I know they had a problem for because Joy got kicked out of Ashley's house during Christmas, right? During yeah. the Why did that happen? Let's go back. That's the part I'm missing. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened. Okay. Joy and Clifton got engaged way before we started filming. Oh, it's because she said that she was married and Ashley, right. told, Ashley told her best friend while we were filming while she was, the camera was in her face, that they were already married. Right. Now, this was the secret that Joy wanted her to keep. Right. For whatever yeah. reason, she wanted her to keep that personal secret that they, they were married. I forgot. So Ashley gets upset and mad of something that occurred all filming. We were not filming at the time. We were at her house. It was a, a seafood giving. She called it a seafood giving. Mm -hmm. Not filmed. And a situation occurred at her house. Mm -hmm. And from that situation, Ashley got upset. And then she went on camera and told her best friend, you know, they're married. And right. then she came to the cycling class. Ashley came to the cycling class with me and Joy. She revealed that she did tell her girlfriend that they were already married. Right. Joy told me as well. She said, you know, I remember that phone call, but I think she texted Ashley because Ashley ended up showing proof of text messages <laughs> on the show. Mm. But I think Ashley, Joy had called me and said, you know, we already married, but don't say anything. And I never said anything. I never even told my husband. Actually, I forgot all about it. So mm. Ashley spilled the beans. Mm. <laughs> right. And her personal, you know, the secret that she did not want out. For whatever reason, we don't know. It could have been Legal issue. She never right. told me that. Because they did come from another show. They right. did come from right. another show. Did the production love. know that they were already married? No. That they, is a big secret to keep. And when they that told is. Them, I remember when that information came out, when Ashley said, I told them you were married. The producer, the executive producer, got put me in the car and said, did you know this? And I said, no. Mm. And I still was like, oh. I don't know nothing. I'm not saying anything until Joy said, right now you could tell. Because she told me, don't say anything. I'm from D.C. So in D.C., growing up, you can't be Period. telling people business. Period. You know what I'm saying, Sheldon? Period. <laughs> it sounds like Joy and them might have been trying to get a bigger check in order for a wedding type situation or sponsor. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it sounds like. Whatever it was, it was to not what? tell my business. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, and she mm -hmm. and she told her business on some he say she say stuff, something that wasn't even accurate. It mm -hmm. was he say she said, and she was like, "Well, you mm -hmm. said," and we was like, "No, that's not what happened," and that's why I told her. So she was wrong for telling right. her business, all for some he Yikes. say she said. Yeah. And then from that point on, it just never got better. So here's the thing: like I don't under Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my thing i at the at the um a secret is a secret and if somebody asks you not to tell your business then you are supposed to be the gatekeeper of the secret but then at the end of the day if you know a person can't hold water but the only way you would know that if that person was really your friend i'm just saying but however whatever it might have been the foundation of making a friendship just to see what was gonna happen but when you decide to sit here and call somebody's husband sassy ass bitch or claim that they actually like disrespected you at the wizards game mm -hmm. i don't know clifton i don't know joy right now my favorite is arena on the show because you and your husband it be seeming like y'all about to go at it like I don't want a divorce, and next thing you know, I love you. <laughs> thirty years. That's what happens in a marriage of thirty years. Yeah, right? Absolutely. You know, you be sitting there looking at them like they about to, yo, it's about to be the end of their marriage. And she's like, <laughs> be like, I'm just saying, this is how I feel. And then she be like, mm, love you. Mm, you be like, oh. right? Like, you be like, oh, okay. So I like them. So but, I love that. 
when it came down at the Wizards game, and you had uh, Ashley crying, calling herself number one, confronting somebody's husband. Like you should have not done that in the first place. Mm-hmm. You you don't need to address anybody's husband. You already had a conversation with baby girl. Period. Yeah, that's what happened. She had a co- joy. She brought up something. So Jamie was being messy. Jamie was being messy, and Jamie was at the game, and he was like, "Is everybody good, Jamie? You know everybody." Right. You want to funny? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Jamie know everybody ain't good, but he's gonna ask the question anyway. So and Ashley's like, uh-huh, "Well, she said I'm jealous." Da, 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 da. And then Joy, I will say Joy being the grown woman that she is, instead of doing it for TV, she said, "You want to step outside?" But let's stop right there. This is this part was filmed but cut out. So when Je- when uh, Ashley asked her, your husband said, "I'm jealous of you." Mm. I'm sitting next to Ashley. Remember. Her husband is sitting next to her. She's in the middle. Her husband says out her mouth, baby, that's not what he said. Mm. Three times. That was cut out. Mm. And I said, did you hear your husband? He said he didn't say that. And she kept going. So that's the part you guys are missing. Her husband said, mm. hey, he didn't say he didn't say that, baby. baby. He didn't say it. But she kept going. Oh, mm. y'all better own it. Because that is not. Yeah. And oh, that's why he left out. He was so upset and mad because all this was going on. He ended up leaving and going down to the court. But while they was outside talking, that's when DJ Q, we're going to call him DJ Quicksilver. Quicksilver. DJ, when he just, Quicksilver, let me try to say quick. When DJ Quicksilver was walking downstairs, he said, I'm going to the court. You coming? He was like, I'm gone. And she like, ignore him. <laughs> I'm going to the court. He's like, all right, fine. But when she came back in there and she addressed Clifton like she did, you can tell Clifton had no animosity whatsoever. Like he was giving, he wasn't even matching her energy for real, for real. It was like yeah. sarcasm type situation when he was like, he's like, so I'm just trying to figure out why you don't like her. So he and said, what am I supposed to do? It wasn't like he was like, what? You know, right. he, didn't yell, he didn't call out her name or any of that. I was standing right there when all that was going on. Now, he he did that, a lot of the guys and the producers would have jumped in immediately. But because that did not happen, it was no reason for anybody to break up anything. <laughs> the, only reason it, you, the only reason you even saw production in camera eye like we did was because when they... She said, hold huh? When she did like that, production was like, okay, hold on. Hold on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no. She was all talking. But however, the one thing I do want to talk about, because I agree, I agree with the Tylers. I'm an honorary Tyler child. <laughs> so, um, I agree with the Tylers when they said like she wasn't disrespected. Like she really just did the most and when dj quicksilver expected jamie to even step in like one thing i didn't like what dj Quick- quicksilver said he was like i mean it's not okay for a man i don't know to argue with my wife but it's okay for if jamie decides to argue with your wife because you know jamie that's weird that's weird energy my boy so if it was jamie intervening and saying hey da, 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 then you would believe jamie it was I'm just yes because right. it- where, where Ashley said to Quick during the show, she said, Jamie and Irina just stood there and didn't do anything. Which was a lie. You were we standing right the game. game. We were standing right there. And what you all did not see that was filmed is that I took Ashley out in the hallway. Y'all didn't see that because they didn't oh, show. Wow. Took her out in the hallway to calm her down. But remember, Raina and Jamie just didn't do anything. What? Went out to the hallway, mm. Ashley. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Your mm-hmm. husband's upset. I kept telling producers, I said, call her husband. Y'all ain't getting none of that. That was all film. Right. Wow. So this is what I got for you, Arena. Because you decided to call Miss Terry and get her in the mix of y'all business. <laughs> Why you did it? To get Terry. <laughs> Why you call Terry? So Why Terry, you Terry got four hours. Why you let Terry got four hours to tell that girl? You're judging. So I didn't know Terry was going to do. So first of all, I didn't tell Terry anything about the group. I told her that the group needs help. 
because okay. she's helped my, me and my husband on numerous occasions, as you can see on the show. So I told her, I said, we're post, we're getting together soon. I would love to get everybody together because we need some healing. We need help. I didn't know she was going to attack Joy. That was not the plan at all. You know, I wanted her to go around the room like she normally would do, like she did at the Salt Cave season one, right. and talk to everybody, not just single one person out. I never thought that was going to happen. But let me tell you, I had a gummy. <laughs> we had little gummies and stuff on the trip. So I was like out of it for real. As you can see, Jamie and I were like, and he was eating a chicken. That's because we were. Right. I, we were like this. I was like, why is he eating that chicken like that? Like he's, it's like almost slow mo. We were like <laughs> gone a little bit, but. <laughs> but that was the thing though. I was just like, okay. I understand where Terry was coming from, but I think it was just the wrong setting for her to try it to definitely break, was. break yeah. all that down. She felt it at that moment. And yeah. like I said, like in the beginning, she said, This is not a safe space for me to be vulnerable. She exactly. vocalized that. Yeah. And then because yeah. then Black and Ashley all played off of it, like yeah, that entire side over there that doesn't get along with joy. So right. it was not a safe place for her. To, to do it, but of course we're filming a show. So if you just think if the cameras wasn't there and this was a real situation outside of film, yeah, I would have got up and everybody would have been like, first of all, none of us would be there together. <laughs> That's number yeah. one. Number two, I would have stopped it. Somebody would have stopped it. Joy would have been stopped it, but we're filming a TV show. Producers right. are right here. They want to see this play out. So it's not like we could just say, stop. Everybody stop. Let's go. Go right. on. Let me go upstairs. You know, we had to let it play out. Ooh, okay. Well, I'll try to, because I binge watched, I tried to watch episode seven, but Xfinity was hating on me, telling me I couldn't watch it yet. And I have all the other episodes recorded so I can catch it. Mm -hmm. So I'm one episode behind. But with that being said, girl, I need some tea. What's going on? What's up? What's up? I need well, to let me just tell y'all, y'all haven't seen nothing yet. Okay, it gets uh, you want to. So, just to give you all a little bit, um, uh, Joy and Ashley are going to kind of come together. Okay, <laughs> so just we will bit. see some type of resolution in the situation okay. because the people are tired. This story yeah. has been dragging out all season. Like, I, no, I can't even take it. I'm tired. Everybody's so tired. Are all the couples on this season, are you guys just now in the season or on the show, like becoming friends or are there any like longer relationships before the, before the show? Um, I know Sherelle and Ashley have been friends or so they've known each other for like 10 plus years. I think they had the longest um, relationship. Uh, of course, we just met Winter through Monique season one. Right. Um, I knew of Sherelle. Sherelle knew of me like years ago, but we never hung out. We never really seen each other in person. We just knew of each other. Uh, of course, uh, Quicksilver and Jamie did business together. Jamie's been throwing parties in D.C. for 15 plus years, and he was one of his DJs. Mm. So some connections there. Okay. So how is the relationship between you guys and Winter coming along? Oh, oh, it's no relationship. Mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All, all y'all let hell freeze over. Y'all oh. went to hell and came back to heaven and, at the gate. Y'all went on vacation. <laughs> she had she tried to have a little mediation with, now with you nothing. and Ashley. And now it's, it's fine. So I'm going to just tell you, the rest of the season, we're good. We're cordial. You know, you're going to see it play out. Winter and I have no issues on the show. Sherelle and I, you know, we started off a little shaky. We're fine on the show. Everybody is cool. After filming, it was a problem. Before mm. the filming. So after filming, the social media war started. The beef started. It got ugly. We went to reunion. We filmed reunion last summer. The reunion is three wow. parts. Three parts? Three parts? Uh, I say ugly. Ten hours of Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. Fuck you. Kiss my hours. Whoa. Wow. And it hasn't been right since. 
the fact that y'all did this all last summer and then last summer, to live, to live all of this right now is and that's I mean, we haven't been cool since after reunion. Everybody went home, man, mm -hmm. except for you know who you see is, is separate. You know, we got um, the patties and got Winter over there with the silvers. It's still that way. But as we're watching the show, people are getting mad all over again. On top of already, right? Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just getting ugly and ugly. So it's how is that for you? I'm sorry, CJ. How is that for you watching it back? I mean, for me, um, I don't feel a certain type of way. I just hate that social media and the trolls and the other cast members are reliving it and acting like it was yesterday. Yesterday. And then, you know, this stuff is mm. old. But, but because we just saw it yesterday. They acting like it's today. You know? But we just saw it yesterday. That's the thing. Yeah, but that's what I said. No, it's old. Like, you wasn't complaining a year ago. After right. we filmed and it wasn't Aaron, everybody, it was crickets. Nobody was saying anything. Everybody moved on and was living their life. Now that you comes back on, you acting like, I did this to you yesterday. You know, so. You remember, this, you remember that commercial? You remember the commercial with the Energizer Bunny? It keeps going and going and going. Mm. That's what happens. Yeah, it's never going to get They need that. They battery pack wasn't uh, fired up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now it is. So now that their battery pack is fired up, they're like, oh yeah, I got a I'm mad at you again. And I got people on my side that say you wrong as hell. Like see, that's the thing. Mm. People on social media, but the people on social media that they don't have any fans. It may be 10% that say we like Ashley and Winner. It's 90% that hate them. If mm. you go on social media on Twitter, they're destroying them. If mm. they go, if they post anything. They're going on their post and saying, shut up, girl. You're a mean girl. You shouldn't be on the show. You need to quit. I've seen what people say they want to sign a petition to get Ashley and quick off the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. It's really I mean, wow. I mean, I see a lot of comments. What I can't wait to see play yeah. out, to be honest with you, is how quick is going to look or what quick is going to do when he actually finally sees that Clifton did not disrespect his wife. He saw mm -hmm. that, but Quick is, um, he's not active on social media and not for the show. Now he'll post his DJ stuff. He's just staying out of it. He doesn't really want to have anything to do with the show right now. And I, I think he's he's like, I he's like, his wife looks so bad on the show. It's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't even want to talk about the show. I don't want to post about the show. I want to act like I never did the show. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Oh, so you you did it. We seen it and we still watching. Like yeah, it's almost like, oh my God, I can't believe we act and behave this way, you know? And yeah, we have a comment here. Uh says somebody, oh Jamie said we need Dr. Cunningham back. Dr. Cunningham. Oh, the therapist. Yeah, so you agree? <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, we need it for a few people on the show. No, 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 no. I want to stick with Terry. I want to stick with Terry. She messy. I like well, Terry. Terry is an intuitive healer. It's two different things. We have a therapist, which is Cunningham, who helped my son and my husband in okay. uh, the first part of the season. And then you have an intuitive healer, which is Terry. She does the reads and all that kind of stuff. We need a therapist. I need it. The cast members need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Terry didn't seem like she was getting too far in the episode with Joy. It didn't seem like it was going too good. Yeah, it was a lot. But mm -hmm. I, like I said, I didn't give her any information about Joy. I didn't tell her the group was like at odds, like this person is beefing with this. I, did, I didn't do any of that. I just said, can you come help this mm -hmm. group? And that was it. She didn't get anything from me. Okay, so since we were questioning why Phaedra is like on the show, uh, <laughs> why the hell is Winter there? Because I just don't understand her situation. Like, baby girl, you were damn near at odds with everybody. And then every time somebody see you talking to somebody, they be like, oh, shit. Okay, Elsa. Like, this is a, this is an episode of Frozen. <laughs> What's going on? Why is she there? I asked that same question in one of the episodes this season. <laughs> Why is Winter? Yeah, I, I want to know. Well, 
with her, I think the Kirk secured her spot from season one as being the, the villain. She was the villain in season one. And, the, you know, you had people who really loved her. Um, she was drama. So they wanted to keep her. She had divorced her husband season one, season two come along. So I'm like, well, is Winter coming back? Because, like, she doesn't have a husband. I don't know if she's dating, but, like, why would she come back? Okay, because she's probably drama. Um, she comes back, but she's not really the drama or the villain anymore. <laughs> you know, right. she's just there floating around, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, why is Winter even here? I don't even think she was in a lot of episodes. Um she wasn't relevant this season. I'm no, she wasn't. I was on and on and on. It was like what I've seen so far. And I now it's like I only binge watch this past season. I need to binge watch the prior seasons. And when I do, Arena, we're gonna do this all over again. And you have to have your favorite thing to sip on. And then Jamie gonna have to come in. Oh yeah. We, Jamie in the comments, he's like, Oh, that was an hour ago, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, Raina, you have my name. Jamie, go ahead. Jamie, go ahead. I'm right here. Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need to move to like Potomac or DC. I already have friends. I love this. Like, this is amazing. But this, uh, so we're here, on eight this weekend, Saturday. And we have um, 11 episodes in three reunions. So we have 14 episodes this season. Wow. Okay. So why? Jackie, we, 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 go we, ahead, we, go we ahead. Scoop, scoop down. What's, what's your question, Sheldon? Yeah, no, no, no. It is not a question. Yeah, is, hey, Jackie, what's going on? What's up, y'all? Oh, hey, I'm I'm man. You can't see your face. So, 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 Iran, no, you have it. my word. I uh, will be abreast and I will be ready for the discussion when you come back. Yes, bring me back after the reunion. Yeah, Sheldon, yes. Yes. Sheldon, you gotta catch up, man. You, you go on, man. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. See, my thing is, I, I, I'm a makeup artist, hairstylist, so I've been around these orbits ever since some of these shows began. And I'm friends with a lot of, you know, with some of these people that I'm acquainted and I do business with them. And mm -hmm. I just know them as different people mm -hmm. than the show portrays them. Mm -hmm. And then I understand the wickedness that goes on with what they cut out and what they put in, just like that stuff that you just said. That's customary. Mm -hmm. It was so much more, you know what I'm saying? And then they portrayed y'all as if y'all had nothing to do with the resolution of the thing and try to make right. it seem like y'all was just there. Just standing not doing, it. Right. So and that's that, what was kind of that was a production. That was Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, that was was Ashley. So sure. Can I say something on Sheldon? Mm -hmm. You said I started to mess in the sweet. When, when you're in this world, like you just said, you already know the beats that they want, right? So right. We, we were six episodes in, I believe, or four or five, whatever that was. And it was time to move that storyline along, along. So mm -hmm. that's why Jamie was like, hey, I'm going to address the bullshit. Y'all need to go talk and fix this bullshit so we can move. Right. On. So everybody sitting there knew I was gonna do it because the phone came up saying, "Get this shit moving." <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on, it, it's Jamie for me trying to call me. Y'all talking about? I'll call him messy. I did. I thought he was just saying Sheldon. I was like, Sheldon said that. I appreciate that. That's what feels. <laughs> I'm reading the comments and I said, I ain't gonna blame you. When no, 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 no. When I was sitting there, no, when I was literally sitting there watching it the other night, it was you. It was you for me. So we gonna call out the elephant in the room. Uh -huh. <laughs> everybody good. Uh huh. Everybody good. <laughs> Thank you, sisters. Y'all, please don't fix it. That was me saying, like, just wrap that bullshit. Up. Right. No. And I, and I, 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 I respect it, but it was just, it was just funny because when you did it, I'm sitting here in my bed. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and one more thing I want to address that y'all said earlier about the, um, oh, you was watching, you got notes. Oh, right. yeah. I was locked in. Hold on. <laughs> what you talking about, man? Oh, okay. they were talking about TV moments when people do stuff for TV. Right. And, and when, just like Raina said, all that happened in the suite. And when she went out in that hallway and came back in and got in his face, 
I said, it's a TV moment, so let them do their TV shit for drama, because y'all know the drama is Right, it sells. So right. I'm not getting into that with 10 producers and cameramen all around us. Nobody's in danger. So right. it, it was, to me, it was like, this is TV bullshit, but I'm not even looking at it. That's why I didn't even realize we moved the little gesture he made. I didn't even realize he did that. When she went on, that's when I said, man, come over here. Don't even tell nothing else, Because right. it was way more shit said than that. Seven years, like another mm -hmm. 15 minutes more worth of shit. And that's what mm -hmm. the producers bust in when she went crazy. Because Jamie, I just, just want to know what would you do if somebody was like, sassy ass bitch talking about you? What would, what would you do? Y'all don't know my mouth by now? <laughs> Listen. Well, I think it would be uh, it would have been ugly because Joy, <laughs> because I'm telling you, Joy was so calm when she, she got was. it. Like, no way! Like we would have been flipping tables in there. No, I'm bad. I wouldn't have been as calm. Like if somebody Period. in my husband's face, I don't play that. So I would have been. Yeah, like, no. And I will say, after an relationship. We could have got in. Like, we had that type of relationship back then. Right. But we could have. I was like, you get the fuck out of my face. And it would have just been that. And she would have said what she said. We would have got at it. But he didn't have that type of relationship that even blinked. Like, any movement, she was on a thousand. No, facts. Facts. Do you agree with um, watching when Ashley and Quick were talking when they were walking a dog? Do you agree with Quick's? Stance on things at that very moment? Hell no. He called me. He said he called me. He called me the next day and asked me what happened. And I told him nothing. I said, she lying. Like, what are you talking about? And he like, nah, she said this, this, and this, and this. I said, what? I said, man, that's not what happened. And I told him verbatim, if you get on TV and co-sign that behavior, you're going to look dumb as shit. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I said, no, you are. I said, you do know it's cameras that recorded this shit, right? I said, you're going to see it when it come on. You're like, damn, I look like a fool. And he right. did. He did. And we had both conversations about it. You're going to see. We had one at Deep Creek, one at the other one. And y'all don't see it all. And it was at the point where I was like, I'm tired of arguing. You're not going to see it no other way than that's my wife and this has to be So I'm like, well, I don't know what else to tell you, bro. Right. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm very. At this point, invested. Y'all done got like five hours of my life <laughs> right now. And then now I got to go back two more seasons. Y'all about to have, at this point, like 30 hours of my life. We here. <laughs> Maybe me, you, and Arena are really at this point. Shit. I'm talking about, bro. You got to I'm going to be there to see right. <laughs> giving. The, the new seafood giving for Thanksgiving. I'm going to be there. So, but no, I really appreciate appreciate both of you coming on here, and yes. I know we just pulled Jamie out of the woodwork. Yes. I appreciate yes. you. Uh, he was waiting. He was waiting in the wing. He was waiting. Can <laughs> so we have a family update? How's everything with your son, and how's all of that going on? Everybody's good. Jason, he's home. He completed his program and graduated last October. Yes. Look, let me put this out there. He's still trying to work for Apple. Okay. Yeah. Got Apple. okay. He's going to work for Apple. Uh, Brittany's doing really good. She got a promotion on her job. Mm. Lil Jamie's still working with That's the kids awesome. um, at school. Um, so he's doing, everybody's doing really Mama good. Mama T made this custom. Oh, yeah. Mama T. Sure. She okay, Mama T. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so we got a YouTube channel now. We learn how to put the tool with. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the shirt she made for. Okay. Nice. That's I what's up. That. So what we're going to do is, because um our our budget is just going to grow. I'm putting it in God's hands. Mm -hmm. My mouth to God's ears. Right? My bu our budget is just going to grow. And we're going to be able to come and do this interview in person. I don't want to do that in a situation. I want to do this in person. So we bye -bye. Bye -bye. the fact that if, um, you said what? Am I invited to the in person? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, right you, you guys get to invite one cast member that you guys want there as well. Okay. We all know it's not gonna be winter. 
I got one question. Oh, ooh, child. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do I need? Okay. Her name is Sherelle or Chanel. Oh, Sherelle, Sherelle. Yeah. The Duncans. Okay, the Duncans. Was Sherelle a side chick? Mm. We're going to let y'all, we're going to wait because we addressed this at the reunion and I don't want to give up any Great. information. Okay. Okay, so the it's reunion is right really, really good. It's probably the best episodes of the season. It's three parts and you will hit it. It's going to come up. That discussion will come up at the reunion. Okay. So Maybe got, she didn't know she was the side chick. I got another question. Mm. Joyce Spring ugly. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what, you oh, heard man. me. Was Joy's friend ugly? That's why oh, she got I, the friend. Oh, um, the the girlfriend. Yeah, that that. I she don't met know, her. but she she is about her business, and she's a high power person. Oh, so black chose the wrong one. That's say that. I'm just playing. I'm just I believe playing. it is that. Well, Raina, <laughs> you have successfully. <laughs> May return me to <laughs> to these uh, uh reality shows. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen, so, so I'm you, not even you gonna hold the medallion. You get the medallion. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna hold you. Like I've been doing, I've been watching reality TV for a long time, from when I used to work with Boss Up to even now. Back then, I used to get paid for it. Now. I, then I just watched it for fun. And now we're getting to a journey where I'm about to get paid for it again. So with that being said, right? Own network has always been. <laughs> but when I told this to y'all, oh, baby, I was like, then I was texting my boyfriend and I was like, I'm going to have to talk to you in a second and we didn't go to commercial because I'm locked in right now. And it's the Wizards game. And it's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you guys are very, your show is very interesting. I love it. Like I said, y'all about to have 30 more hours of my life. So therefore now we are locked in like this. We locked in. We period. Like, period. Let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's not treat me like I'm winter. I'm going to show out like I'm spring. <laughs> and I say, I'm going to say one more thing. I know you didn't see episode seven. No. Um, once you get past all the bullshit, once you get past that, like she said, I was uh, in law enforcement in D.C. for 25 years. I have a saying that I talk about the mental state of being a police officer for that long in D.C. and now being retired. So you'll really, really get a good uh, insight on me when you see that. Okay. So let me ask you this. With you doing that, and then I know you stated on the uh, show, you owned a club? Or yeah, I've been throwing parties. Dance concerts in DC, Charlotte, Miami. Okay, so with so with that being said, because I come from also nightlife in Atlanta, so and I, we employed officers like for our nightlife events or whatever the case may be. You being in law enforcement and then also being in nightlife, like how does that work for you, like? Is it more stressful or do you feel like because of the maybe events that you're having, it's hard for you to turn a blind eye to certain things? Like, how was that? So I, I'll tell you, that's a great question because everybody asked me how I did it. You got to remember, I was throwing parties in the early 2000s. I was the police in 97. So from that world, I made a lot of relationships that actually helped me with closing cases. Um, in 2012, I went to homicide. And, you know, I because I knew everybody in the city from the street, from the party world. You know, I, I just it was like an outlet for me as well when you're dealing with murders every day. And then when mm -hmm. I'm done with that, I went in this other world and I was doing the biggest shit in the city. So it was like a, a mental... Out there, plus I had relationships that helped me on these cases. It was like the weirdest shit ever. Got you. I do know 
so me being in Atlanta nightlife, I came up under AG Entertainment. So I, I, used, to be, I, I used to be Alex's right hand at Vision in Atlanta. So it's crazy when it comes to DC. I know we used to partner with, was it Mark Barnes? Mark Barnes. Mark Barnes. Park. Taz, Mark. Uh, I know Kenny that be down in Atlanta. Kenny Johnson. Kenny, Kenny Burns. Kenny Brown. I know Kenny. I know all the guys. Kurt Boogie. Oh, yeah, no. the crazy thing with Mark Barnes, we had our own Mark Barnes down here, and he was with Cloud Nine. So, mm -hmm. like, that was always like a Mark Barnes, no, the DC Mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mark is a legend up there. I'm, I was yeah. doing parties at Park in 2010, and I was doing mm -hmm. all the celebrity stuff. So, all the celebrities we brought in, we brought them to Park, they parties. So, this was 14 years ago. I love DC. I've only. Partied in DC, okay, like twice, but I do love DC, and I've been to a Wizard game in a suite. We didn't have no fights. <laughs> we never had problems either. <laughs> <laughs> we just like hurry up, and take these mics off. Right, right. Take that mic too. I took that mic off, and we just gone. I, I don't blame you. Listen. I've had my own versions of get this mic off. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate you guys for being on here. We're definitely yes. a more in-depth situation. And you guys have to invite one person each. Okay. If you want to be a part of the situation, because we're gonna fly to DC for this one, baby. All right. Well, we look forward yeah. to it. Right. Period. So Insta out Atlanta, Insta News Break. We do this every week. We just come on here, talk shit about the hottest topic. Hold on, let me see if there's some things I got. Y'all know I'm old. My <laughs> killing me back. <laughs> Y'all had him on his knees. I know, right? Okay. So now the only thing I want to bring up. Hold on, wait, Carmen, are you bringing up assets? Are you bringing up assets? No assets. Not on the live, but I can bring it up in the edit. Oh, okay. So the thing I wanted to talk about was the Santana situation. Did y'all see that? Mm -mm. Okay, so oh, yeah, yeah, about what they call him that character. So I see Santana falls out at the store and compares him and his friend to Timon and Pumbaa. They really oh. look like Timon and Pumbaa. I need you to pull that in the asset. I, 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 <laughs> I thought that was the funny thing. Fell out. Good. It was, I was, it was that, really funny. And, 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 and um, what's the friend? Uh, I don't know who the friend is, but this was the thing. This was oh them. my goodness. Okay, like, so they was on live, and Saucy sitting here reading the comments. He was like, "You start rapping, uh, uh, per whatever, right?" And then next thing you know, he goes, "Why somebody call us Timon and Pumba? Oh my God, I'm weak and I'm aggravated, bitch!" Like. I thought that was and funny. went off. It had they me went laughing, laughing like, so hard. It had me laughing like ten minutes. I couldn't catch my breath. I thought Saucy was dating the guy from Love and Love and Hip Hop. And like, Damn. Oh, you know, yeah. Saucy yeah. broke up with him on Love and Hip Hop. Yeah, what? they broke up. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. He tried to tell Saucy it was Dell. Dell tried to tell Saucy, "I'm the one that brought you to the table." <laughs> Saucy said, "Bitch, it's me." They wanted me, oh not you. Like, yeah, it was hey, okay. Oh, so CJ, recap the question that we had last week about are we expecting too much of our friends with uh, Spice and Carly Red and the makeup artist? Okay, so do you know, do you watch Love and Hip Hop at all? I do. Okay, so, so uh, Spice and Carly Red have been going at it for a while. Right. So now, Spice on the last episode, not the last one, but the one before that, her and Carly, Carly Red had a, a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the conversation they were talking about, pretty much Spice was telling Carly how she felt hurt. Cool. That's what she did on camera. Mm -hmm. Cut to now they done finished uh, filming the season. Spice decides to go on live. And be like, no, also, this is why I'm mad at Cardi. I mean, I keep calling her Cardi. This is why Cardi, I'm mad at Cardi. Cardi. Let me find out Cardi be talking about me. 
so Spice goes on live and tells that the real re one of the real reasons that she's not dealing with Carly Red is because Carly knew that the makeup artist that both of them have been using for the past few years used to fuck with her man. Oh, she was mad at Carly for not saying anything. So, with everything that you're going through with your friends, mm -hmm. do you feel like we ask too much of our friends? And the makeup artist comes to her house. House is like his house. So this was not filmed, though. This was something that no. never right. right. In the in the boyfriend would be cheating. And the boyfriend so would be real. Yeah. Be right. Cheating. And they was doing it for like two years. Yes. So yes. they had this girl. Probably part because if they supposed to be so close and good friends, she should have said something. But can I? Ooh, I, I think that brother was wrong. He wrong too. Yeah, I think he's an artist, right? <laughs> I think he was wrong. Because at the end of the day, how many times girls done tried to tell girls something and it flipped on the girl? Right. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to say this. I've been in a situation before where my homegirl was like with this dude and she was kind of fucking off. He was fucking off too. When they decided to get married, I was like, okay, now we've set a different playing field. You know what I'm saying? Like things are a little different. So when she was like fucking with somebody and it was somebody she was fucking with before they got married, she was still fucking with this person. And I heard her on the phone. I was like, uh, sis, no. Mm -hmm. You decide to say I do. So because you decide to say I do, you need to cut that shit off. Like, that's not even fair. She's like, but this is from before. It's not it. I said, I understand and I get it, but nah, uh, she's like, okay, I'm gonna cut it off. I get what you're saying. Cool. Then I find out through the grapevine, uh, through one of my other friends, that this girl we know is fucking with my homegirl who I just had a conversation with, man. She riding around the city in his car and shit. And I'm like, Ooh. they telling me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Rated that look was priceless. Why is you telling me? I don't want to know, right? So... I'm like, how am I going to deal with this? Right. right? So I mm. end up seeing him. And it was just me and him when I saw him. I said, look, I heard about somebody riding around the city in your car. You know who I'm talking about. I feel like you need to handle that and then go with it from there. Because I have not said anything to my friend. And if I say something to my friend, it's going to be a prop. So I want you to go ahead and handle it first. He was like, all right. I said, so if you know what I'm talking about, go ahead and handle that. Because if I hear it again, then I'm going to say something. He said, say less. I heard within less than 48 hours, he had broke it off with that person. And then that person came back around to me, bitch, you ain't shit. Da -da 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 -da. Ain't it your business? I said, here's the crazy part. I never said your name, sis. Mm -hmm. I never said your name. I just told him, there's somebody riding around, da da da, and da 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 da. And I don't want to have to da da da. So with that being said, handle da da da. He was like, say less. And he handled it. So what you mad at me for? See, I hate getting in the middle of relationships. Me too. Because they'll mm. be one day and then you get in the middle of it. And then next thing you know, they hugging and kissing. And then you standing here like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like getting in the middle of none of that foolishness because I had a Me situation either. and I told them, huh, and I don't even want to talk about because they may be on here. <laughs> <laughs> this situation i was like you gotta deal with this and handle this because you put me in an awkward position yeah right. so the spouse like so i'm i'm thinking he's gonna deal with it but i never brought it up to the spouse and i just don't want to be put in those situations because again something that happens they come back together and then they blame it and looking at you sad like i'm not trying to get in the middle of none of that foolishness 
Exactly. That's the part of the reason that, like, with that particular person, I put it out there with him. I said, look, I don't want to have to do this. And I haven't said nothing yet. And I don't want to have to say anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to bet it. So I don't have to say nothing. Because it comes back back that, like, when she find and she find out through another way, and she be like, bitch, it's gonna be hard for me to hide my face. Like, yep. oh my god. I think that in the Carly Red and Spice situation, I think that Carly, since both of them were using the makeup artist, she should have talked to Spice's boyfriend and the makeup artist and said, Listen, if you want to be coming to her house and you know she's coming to your house. You need to say something to her because if if it's the past, it's the past. Nobody knew that in the future, future girlfriend would meet up with past fling. So right. just put it on the table so that everything is everything all cool. out here and it's not about yeah. you guys hiding anything because hiding something seems like right. is this gonna be a like sneaky thing? Right. Right. Yeah. And that's just like like Bambi. In that interview with Amanda Seals, and she's yeah. interviewing her, and Amanda says, "Did you know I used to fuck with Scrappy?" And Bambi was like, "No." Who wants to find out like that? No, I but to I be honest in advance so that I'm not embarrassed, so that we don't have no issues. Right. Just I think tell you, there's nothing been, now. I honestly think there should have been a conversation done off camera. And not on camera. I hope, I hope it was a conversation done off camera before she did it on camera. She dropped that bomb on like, camera. I, yeah. I truly hope that was the case because I don't know, I know because Scrappy I saw went on his live looked- and he was like, "Did she tell him that she went on there and did that interview? Did you know I used to fuck her? Like it was just so messy. I felt yeah. bad for him. Like Scrappy was just trying to be messy and get under baby skin, period. Because at this point, you have been lined up. You have lined up perfectly with the embarrassment, though. Right. But you've done everything under the sun to get this girl to respond. And she hasn't responded to anything. Mm -hmm. And then you finally be like, boom. Well, I fucked that. And they're like, oh, we already said it. And now it's like... I don't want to be caught out there like that. Just yeah, tell don't me. Don't do me like that. Don't let the streets tell me. I don't think anybody. What you said, Sheldon? You said don't tell don't me. Don't let the streets tell me shit. Oh yeah, don't, don't, don't let the streets tell me. Don't let the streets tell me. If you my friend, tell me. If yeah. you my man, tell me. Don't let yeah. somebody else. Please don't. So do you agree with me and CJ where he should she he should have that conversation? And deal yeah, with I think he was wrong because because yeah. that was the greatest commitment. And to, to be perfectly honest, that is his responsibility because if you're protecting your partner, you're protecting her from foolishness. And then, too, the, the, the overall embarrassment of that. You get what I'm saying? And yeah. then, too, I mean, you 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 borderline look slimy mm-hmm. because you because my thing is the 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 side chick got more information than your chick. Yeah, I'm not fucking with both of y'all after it. Period. Bitch, yeah. Why my friend didn't night. tell me? Why the makeup artist didn't <laughs> well, tell me? Why my friend didn't tell yeah, me? You know what? All right, all right, all right, y'all gotta go. All right, y'all gotta get your ass out. y'all gotta go. Go to the trash. Go to the trash. All right, I've been there thirty years. I don't know what y'all talking about right now. <laughs> No, but this was fun, and I appreciate you being on here tonight. Carmen, fourth wall breaker. Now they know what you look like. I'm going to have this reference. Every single time I say, Carmen, da 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 I'm just going to post this picture. This picture. She's probably going to skip all my pictures away. What's the secret to 30 years of marriage and being in the public eye? Because we see a lot of drama with couples on reality TV. I'm always right. <laughs> no. <laughs> just let me be right, Jamie. Just let me just let me say what I gotta say. Let me be right. And we it's peaceful. You'll figure yeah. it out. You'll figure the rest out later. Yeah. So you know, of course, you know, a long relationship, you we have been there, done that. It's not all peaches and cream. It's not a perfect marriage. So this reality TV 
and all these people coming up with these fake receipts and these trolls saying, I'm messing with this guy. He's messing with this. That doesn't bother us. My husband and I know the truth. <laughs> you know, we are inseparable. We do a lot together. We go on date nights together. We're always hanging around each other. Nothing that these people on this reality show or on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever can say whatever they want to say. I know the truth. My, hus my husband knows the truth. We love each other. We have a strong marriage, a strong bond. We're best friends. None of these bitches can break up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. None I of these bitches. It. None of these bitches. None. 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 Whatever mm. they say, it rolls off my shoulder. I don't care. My husband and I look at these comments and look at these text messages or DMs and we laugh. We laugh at you. <laughs> so and that's whatever, so good to know. We, we yeah. laugh at you. Understand? Laugh that's so now. good to know. And the emphasis on we. We, we laugh, laugh at you. Yes. Trust me, while he's getting those DMs, I'm sitting right beside him. Right. I'm, okay. him, I'm showing him. So we're Period. I, I love that. that. Yes. Raina, has anybody ever told you that you give Megan good vibes? No, not Megan good. Never. I never heard that. God, Lee, you look you favor her to me. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm switching mm -hmm. to Marby looking like Chuck the car. Look. Every day I'm a different person. I love it. I love it. Raina, this is you are one of the guests that I have really enjoyed. Oh, you have been you. great. Thank you. Oh my God. I you have been you absolutely guys. great. Thank you. So you better watch out. You better watch out now. I'll tell you about the cover of your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ray, you've been great though. Thank you. Yeah, really good. And thank you so thank much you for being guys. with us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Have you guys still have after reunion? Oh, we ain't it right sounds now. like we need you back. We're going to need you back. <laughs> you <laughs> and your husband. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> with, the round, with the round of hot topics, we're going to have you back anytime. But when That's it comes right. to your one-on-one, -on -one, baby, we're going to wait till that air out. And I'm going to have like yes. a page letter. Yes. Arena. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Oh my god, like no, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so in style Atlanta, it's the news break with Arena Tyler, love and marriage DC. Okay, let's get y'all tuned in. They are actually on episode eight that's about to come on this weekend, right? Saturday at eight o'clock. Come uh -uh. on, Saturday at eight o'clock. So if you missed episode seven, like I did, because the Xfinity was hating like a bitch, then you know, we're going to watch that before they show episode eight. Yeah. But make sure you catch up because I'm about to get in the other seasons too. Mm -hmm. Remember me, my name is Saint CJ Tyler. Don't forget. All right. So with that being said, <laughs> Arena, everybody Tyler. know what you got going on and where they can find you at. So I do have a wig line. <laughs> That's why I switch up so much. Yeah, um, <laughs> So it's Kira Dior, uh, Kira Dior Head .com is a Raina Tyler Lux collection. So if you go on the website, you'll see all my wigs. We actually just added three new um, styles. So hopefully you like them all. Um, my husband and I, we're doing real estate. So if you all have any houses that you're trying to sell, uh, we do distressed homes. We fix them up. We flip them. We do wholesale houses as well. My husband, if you're in the D.C. area, and even if you're in Atlanta, you're not far from D.C., my husband throws the hottest Wednesday night parties, grown and sexy live jazz at the Felt MGM National Harbor in Maryland. So if you're in the area, um, the next one is coming up next week on Wednesday the 27th. So if you can come out and join us, please do. Oh, also, Carlos King, the reality TV king. Okay, he will be in DC um on Mother's Day, actually. Yep. May 12th. Um, so I will be in attendance with Carlos King, Joy Carter, and those other two on the show. <laughs> They'll be Ooh. also on the <laughs> they also be there as well. So come on out and um support us, and we would love to see you guys there. Tickets are right. on sale. So if you go on Carlos King's um Instagram page, 
Go on Kingdom Rain website. You'll see all the ticket information. And I think y'all gonna be in for a pleasant surprise because he's already announced that those those tickets are really selling. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, they are really selling. As a matter of fact, yeah, he mentioned it last week. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned it last week. So he said that he said, "Oh, these tickets going." So yeah, so y'all gonna have a great turnout. Okay, Sheldon, the plug. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Sheldon. <laughs> Sheldon, what you got coming up this week? Was about to be a normal week. You know what, though, I'm I'm going to say it like this: uh, keep watching because Metro Men of Atlanta is about to go live. Carmen and I, this is our this is our next um, endeavor, and we've been in the we've been in the background putting some things together. Um, what Metro uh, Men of Atlanta is a fresh new perspective on some brothers. You know what I'm saying in the life that you know we we want to bring a, a fresh perspective. So um, that's all I'm gonna say right now because we got some stuff coming out. But yeah, so that's what's up. I'm gonna be a guest or I'm a woman. Gotcha. You sure will. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Carmen, the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what Sheldon said, Metro Men of Atlanta. CJ has her one-on-ones. With that being said, all of it can be found on installing.com. We have to pay the bills so I can keep them too busy. It's <laughs> Plush Beauty. It's plushbeauty.com. We have makeup. We have hair. And right after this ends, you're going to see the teaser for Install Atlanta Uncut. Carlos, we have I've been stalking your publicist to bring you back on for the season for a one-on-one. -on -one. You are welcome to join Hot Topics and you are welcome to check out our reality show because we are not coming back to Fox Soul. We are um doing other things. Other things. <laughs> other things. Okay. Installing.com for updates on all of the shows that are there. With that being said, Metro Men of Atlanta, Free Game with Lena Hampton, One on One with Jet Black. I am a true Gemini. I am busy, busy, busy doing all kind of everything all the time. I, I should have let her lead out because all I'm about to say is follow me on Instagram at <laughs> think not CJ. That's me. That's me at underscore NSA. Stand for Install Atlanta. That's what we're doing. With That's that what being we said, woo woo. Watch this trip. Thank you, Irina. We're going to see you again. Thank in you so much. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Absolutely. In the heart of Atlanta, where secrets simmer and tensions rise, comes a reality TV show like no other. Old conflicts continue. So this is where the whole issue started. Fuck you! Oh my God. Oh my God. She know I don't fuck with her. Expect the unexpected. In our industry, anything could happen. He what? Canceled last minute. And his publicist called and was just like, I'm so sorry. The event is literally tomorrow. What are we going to do? I got to figure out something fast. It's time to take this to a new level. It's always some type of foolishness going on. I told you, baby, we got to do shit that makes sense. If your shit go right, then I can frame your company up and then bring in collaborations. When it comes to the team, let me manage that. Too much energy. I don't care. Business and pleasure sometimes doesn't always mix. What's up with your love life? I'm single and ready to mingle, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they doing a shuggy ducky like you doing a shuggy ducky and y'all mix it in for pleasure. Him. He's the one who put in all my life. That man married. Cause that's your little boyfriend. He has more things going on than he is supposed to. Like yes. a wife? Yes. But in the end, it's all about business. Don't come here to do me any favors. This your thing is your room. That's it. Yeah. Woo!